Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm still on the motherhood series, okay? And today I'm going to be answering some of your random questions, questions that I couldn't really like put into specific categories, okay? I'm just going to be answering them as randomly as I got them, okay? So the first question is, what is the safest sex positions while pregnant? Um, for me, I don't think there's any unsafe position. Any position that is um or safe i think you would know <laughs> i don't know i think you would know like any position that will put you in in jeopardy you're supposed to know your body could tell you so i don't think there's any uh position per se that as in like a regular normal position that i would say is unsafe it's just that you have to avoid laying on your back and avoid um you know your husband laying on you okay when, especially when you are now you know more advanced in in the pregnancy try and avoid laying for a long period on your back or your husband should not lay on you but again like i said that husband is laying on you on a pregnant woman like that like is something wrong with your head <laughs> so uh, i think other normal positions that you are comfortable in are actually safe okay is it a must to cut your baby's hair once they turn one year no, you don't have to cut your baby's hair once they turn one year. I did not cut any of my kids' hair when they turned one, once they turned one year. I just continued the way it was. Even Cora that had big rat chop everywhere in her hair. I just, um, you know, took care of her hair. And on her one-year birthday, I, I basically just packed the two I could pack. Is what I just packed for her on her one year birthday. After that, we just continued, and now her hair is very full, very long. I've textlaxed her hair. I'm even transitioning her back to natural hair, and her hair is still very full, very long. So there is really no point cutting the first, uh, cutting their hair on their first birthday. I mean, as they grow older, that hair naturally either falls off or you're going to trim it off. So there's really no point, except it's a boy and you want him to look more boyish. You know, but if I had a boy, I always say it, if I had a boy, I'm going to keep his hair for as long as I can. Like, I like seeing boys with hair, well-made hair, right? How do you manage to space your children when you were giving birth? Okay, between Cora and Ava, I did not do any birth, con birth control. I just did the um, withdrawal method and, you know, checking when my ovulation is supposed to be and just doing it during my safe period and still doing withdrawal method. Um, maybe once in a while we use condom. I'm not, I can't even remember. I remember, but I know that between Cora and Ava, that was what I did. So I wanted the age difference between Cora and Ava to be two years. So I was preventing pregnancy until Cora turned one year and three months. And that month I tried. Okay. And that was when I got pregnant with Ava. Okay. So that's why basically their birthdays are one week apart because their due dates, I think their due dates were even quite similar or so. Yeah. Their due dates were very close. Yeah, Cora is 17th and Ava is 25th of February, okay? So basically one week had passed. Anyway, after I had Ava, I felt like I was done. The reason why I didn't do any birth control between Cora and Ava was because I knew I was going to have a second child and I was basically just waiting. So I didn't want to put any birth control that I'll have to remove or whatever. But after I had um, Ava, I decided to go for IUD because I had a friend that did IUD and she said it was five years, there's 10 years and her own was pretty good. I think she did the 10 years own. So I was like, ah, let me go and do the 10 years own too and just relax for the next 10 years only for my IUD to come out, you know, one day. It's a long, I have a video about it, okay? But if I need to this channel, so my IUD came out and I didn't want to go back and put, I think it was during that pandemic period, I was not just in the mood and I said, you know what, after all, my, um, before, before I had Ava, I actually prevented pregnancy. So I can just continue preventing it until the day I'm in the mood to go and put the IUD back. <laughs> I did not know that what worked in 1980 was not going to work again. Um, yeah, so that was how I got pregnant with Sophia and that's why the age difference is a bit much. I think it's three, not like much, but it's not two years. Because if I, if I had known that I would have had another child, I would have made it, I would have tried to space it at two years as well. Because me and my siblings is two years age difference. I feel like it's a very perfect age. Three years is okay as well, Sha. But I feel like two years is a perfect age. It's not too close in age where you can't, you know, ha have space to breathe. It's not too close in age. But it's close in age that you can, you know, raise your kids all at the same time. And they are also kind of mates, even though they are not mates, but they are kind of mates. I mean, two years age difference is not much. So they are, they are within the same age range and they can play together and all of that, okay? But again, like I said, three years is not bad. 
But yeah, that was it. How did you survive the sleepless nights? Hmm. I don't know. Everybody, when you reach your turn, you go survive and now. At least all of us did not die from sleepless nights. <laughs> when you reach your turn, you go survive and I feel like that's one of the, the biggest um, jolting uh, things about uh, motherhood, especially when you're just a new mom. One of the biggest things that will shock you to your bone marrow is how much sleeplessness or how much lack of sleep you are going to have or how much sleep you are going to lack okay because especially that first few weeks or first few months when the child's waking up anyhow you are feeding breastfeeding if you are breastfeeding or even if you are feeding two two hours three three hours like that lack of sleep eh, it go shock you you know so i don't even know how i coped i know that my husband helped me a lot that time with taking care of the babies but him he goes to work and he walks away from home so when he's not around that was when i was doing all the work uh, but when he's around my husband is a night is a night crawler or night owl so it kind of worked out for me then because anytime he's around anytime the child wakes up in the night if i wasn't breastfeeding um he would be the one to carry the child or even after i breastfeed the child and the child is still awake he will carry the child and go and walk around the house i mean he used to walk around the house with Cora for two hours, three hours. That's when I don't still get it. Now that I'm looking back, I'm like, how did he do it? He will carry Cora and walk around the house for like two hours, three hours until she now sleeps off, then he'll bring her back. By then I would have slept enough. Then when he brings her back, I will now feed her and then we'll know we'll not sleep again. You know, so my husband helped. Um, but aside that, it's something that everybody you could suffer from. In fact, even when you have help, you are still going to wake up because the child will wake up. So you are going to wake up and hand over the child to someone that helps. Except the child sleeps with your mom or sleeps with the person throughout the night. If you're going to have your child in your bed, even if you have help, you are still going to deal with that waking up, sleeping, waking up, sleeping. And sometimes, at some point, once you wake up, it, it becomes difficult to fall back, to, you know, asleep. So sometimes you see yourself sleeping during the day and stuff like that. But yeah, you go, you will manage. The same way all of us manage it, you will manage it. Please, can you share the brands of prenatal vitamins you use during pregnancy. I use pregnant care, even though at some point I couldn't stand it because of the size. I was now taking only folic acid. That ends up folic acid, small bottle like this that has 100 inside. I was taking only folic acid, folic acid at some point. Later on, they now gave me the um, hospital ones, all the generic um, B-complex, iron tablets, and yeah, folic acid as well. Then doing malaria medicine. They have this malaria medicine that some people you take fancy that, whilst other people they will give you um, the one you take every day. You take two tablets every day. Is it every day or every week? I think it's every day you take two tablets. You know, so for Cora, I took the one that you take two tablets every day. For Ava, I think I took fancy that just once or twice during that pregnancy. Then for Sophia as well, I took fancy that. I hated fancy that. But in the hospital, they will tell you to drink it in their like a small child. They'll tell you to drink it in their presence, and they'll tell you to open. Your, are you sure you drank it? Open your mouth because apparently some women don't drink it, you know. And malaria in pregnancy can be very very dangerous. So um, yeah, those are the prenatals I took. Then after I gave birth, I now started taking pregnant care, breastfeeding, and some of those things as well, including vitamin C. Everybody says pregnancy does a number on the body. What are the changes you've noticed in your body after giving birth that have remained? Changes in my body that have remained. Stretch marks, extra pouch, like my tummy did not go back. Oh, I think fat is part of it. I'm not doing anything about it. It's part of it, okay? Because I've seen people who literally snap back after they walked out and did so many things. Some people did surgery, but I've seen people, I know me, I know my body. I know that if I work out very well and I manage my feeding, you know, what I eat, if I manage what I eat and I work out very well, my tummy is going to go back to almost flat, okay? It's not going to be flat as when I was a child, but again, even if I did not give birth, if I had gained the kind of weight that I've gained over the years, my tummy will not still be as flat as it was then, okay? So, yes, giving birth actually changes your tummy and stuff like that, but you can help it. Stretch marks, they fade over time. Mine have started fading, even though... Or the ones on my tummy, tummy, and not fitted like that. But the ones I had on my side, I even had on my on my arm then. Um, yeah, I used to have stretch marks on my arm here a lot. Um, those ones have faded as well. You can also do things about stretch marks. You can use retinol. That's when you are clear from breastfeeding and you're not pregnant. You can use retinol creams to treat your to treat your stretch marks. You can use oils. You can use um, body butters and all those things. You know, just keep the place moisturized as often as possible. Um, yeah, what else did change? Um, all the changes down there, everything went back. I don't even know any difference now. Like, I can't tell that there's a, whether there's a difference or not. 
um and I, I don't know my brother told me if there's any difference or not so for me i feel like that one went back after a while your body will kind of snap try to go back it might not go back to what it used to be but it will still it will be normal to feel normal to you okay um what else again what else um, i don't know i'll consider myself one of the lucky ones i don't think i had that many so if i know that they said did I have deeper voice? I think I had deeper voice. Oh, my feet increased, but my feet increased and now it has started going back to what it used to be. Like now I can manage a 40, before I used to wear 45, 44, 45, but now 45 is now big for me. I can wear 44, I can manage some 43 depending on the shoes. But again, I, I don't attribute it just to pregnancy or giving birth. I attribute, I attribute it to my weight being significantly more than what it used to be. In case you guys don't know, when you lose weight, your leg actually loses weight, okay? You can lose a shoe size when you lose overall weight. I'm experiencing weight loss after birth due to inadequate sleep and so on. What can I do to put back the weight? Or even more, I am exclusively breastfeeding and I have been advised to stop. You don't have to stop exclusively breastfeeding, but I mean, you need to try and sleep, you need to try and eat well, you need to try and relax, you need to try and rest, you need to try and just give yourself peace, okay? Um, yeah, there are some supplements they can give you that can help you with sleep, although I don't advise, like just supplements for sleep, not sleeping tablets, because <laughs> person will get new picking, you can't be taking sleeping tablets, so except you have enough help and you're sure that you, you don't need to wake up for anything, you know, for your child. But feeding, just try and eat well, anything you can tolerate, eat it very well, anything you like, eat it very well. Um, what else again? Try and relax, try and rest, try and sleep, try and spend time with your baby, just you and your baby, just, you know. I've forgotten what they call it. Is it breastfeeding vacation? No, not breastfeeding vacation. I've forgotten what they call it. Where they say take like two days or something and you just spend all day every day in bed with your child. Don't worry about chores or what you need to do. Just as your child wakes up, you wake up with the child, feed the child, clean up your child, lie down back with your child, breastfeed your child, sleep. When the child is sleeping, wake up again, eat, you know, all those things. If you do it for like two or three days, you will see, you will see a significant improvement in your overall well-being. So, yeah. So someone is asking, would you advise washing of newborn wear even if they are still in their pack and all of that? Yes, I advise washing newborn wear. I personally wash all my, my children's clothes even before they are born. Even now, anytime I buy new clothes for them, we wash them first, okay? I always, always wash my kids' clothes first before they wear them. I even wash my own clothes first before I wear them. I don't just take clothes on the pack and wear. In fact, even when I buy new clothes and I want to try them on, I usually try them on in the evening when I know that after I try them on, I'll quickly have my bath. Or I try them on in the morning and after I finish trying them on, I'll have my bath, okay, then I'll go and wash them. The reason is that I don't want any skin issues. I don't want any anything. I don't want to hear stories, okay, because you don't know where these things have been. Some of these clothes that, they, that we most of us are buying, have chemicals on them that you need to wash off you know all those chemicals that your children can re might react to you don't know some of them have been touched by so many different people some of them have been in different places parking store rat has climbed them and stuff you don't know so i don't want to just take them straight from that pack and put on my children's bodies before they will catch one thing so yeah for me i feel like and i like that new baby smell i like that using persil to wash their clothes that persil new baby smell i love it so much so why not if not you know and it even gives you something to do before you give birth if you don't have work. How did you prepare your older children for Sophia's birth so they feel included? I just included them. I talked to them about the pregnancy, talked to them about baby. I can just be sitting down with my terminal, call them and say, ah, baby is hungry. Go and bring something for baby to eat. And they will run and go and bring something for, for me to eat, basically. Uh, when baby is kicking, I try, I try to tell them to touch my tummy to hear or feel baby's kick. I told them to name baby. Basically, it's not Cora that, that brought that name Sophia. I think it was, was it Cora? Either Cora or Eva. One of them was the one that came up with Sophia. And I remember that, wait, oh, Sophia was one of the names I had on my list before I started having kids. I always said I was going to name one of my children Sophia. So it was just perfect. And yeah, so they, they feel included when you include them, like actively include them. You know, let them choose baby name, let them choose baby clothes, let them choose baby, teach them how to wear baby's diaper. When you're bathing baby, let them be around bringing soap for you. When baby is crying, tell them to tell baby sorry. When baby is laughing, tell them to laugh with baby. Like, just include them and they'll, they'll be included. 
And please, how did you stop Cora from sucking her finger? You guys, Mavala, I've talked about it several times. Mavala, that thing worked like magic. I, I still don't understand how that thing stopped Cora from sucking because I used to think that Cora was one of those babies that, or one of those children that would suck for a very long time. So for her to just use Mavala, was it not two or three days? I put it on her finger like two or three days, and that was it. That was how Cora stopped sucking. She didn't even, she didn't even forget herself and mistakenly suck again. I'm like, why didn't I try it earlier? <laughs> I've prevented a lot of you know stress on my part. But the thing is, Mavala, you don't use it before the child is three years. I think it's on three years and upwards. So I should say it's at three years, okay? And then the last question is, how do you take care of nappy rash? So for me, nappy rash is one of those things that are very easy to take care of, except if it's you know in a case where your child is reacting to a nappy, like she's physically allergic to something in that nappy, or that nappy is reacting to her skin, okay? If it is any other type of um, nappy rash, it is quite easy to fix. Make sure you change your child's diapers as often as possible. Some people leave one diaper on the child from morning to afternoon or something. No, I, mean, I don't need to do that though. Once there's any pee on my child's diaper, those first few months of my children's life, I used to waste diaper. I mean, I know it's not waste, but it's better for me. I rather, I rather spend money wasting diaper than spend money trying to treat rash or treat any, anything on my child's bum bum, okay? So for me, once I see any wee, once the child wee's or the child is uncomfortable and I check and there's wee, I just change the diaper. Once, in fact, poo on is not even a question. Like once you just, in fact, I say I poo in, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to finish pooing. Let me change your diaper, right? Change the diaper as often as possible. Look for good brands of diapers and buy like and test different brands. If you if you try a brand and it's not working for you, or you notice that your child is very, or you notice that your child gets diaper rash easily with a particular brand, then ch switch brands, okay? Change brands. Look for very gentle brands and buy. Then try to air the place as often as you can. So basically, like when I finish cleaning my baby up, maybe the baby has pulled and I finish cleaning the baby up. Sometimes I just fan the area, okay? I just put fan there or I use my hand or I use something and just fan the area while playing with the baby. Sometimes I start doing that in my wee again. So I always make sure I put a diaper underneath, but I'm just fanning the place, fanning the place, make sure the place is dry. So once the place is dry, I now take my diaper rash cream or um, um, shea butter, okay? So then I was using like shea butter. So they have different types of diaper creams, right? They have the ones that prevent. So the ones that prevent rashes are like emollients. I suppose what they call their name. They're different types, but there's a, but you can also use shea butter, like um, original, you know, shea butter. You can use it on your baby's diaper area. You can also use Vaseline on your baby's diaper area, petroleum jelly on your baby's diaper area you know, that after the place has dried, right? Then they have the one for curing of rashes. So if you can see, if you see maybe rashes beginning to start or maybe the child was having, some of them are not even just rashes, maybe heat and friction, you know? It wants to see those things on your baby's bum bum, then you use those other ones. The one is called, the name is quite, it's coming to my head, but it's still going. They're usually whitish because it contains zinc oxide. They're usually whitish, like, they're not like shea butter or the emollient or the oily ones. They're usually like whitish. They, they even show up as white on your child's bum bum. Those are the ones that are, that are used to cure rashes. So I always have them on hand. Um, yeah, but diaper rash is not something that my children really dealt with because I was always proactive. Because me, I know a diaper rash can make your child very, very cranky. And you'll just be there wondering, why is this child disturbing me? Why is it? It's diaper rash or it's a full diaper, okay? It's a full diaper. So... Once my child is cranky, I first change diaper, make sure you are well fed, then you will not tell me the color of your problem. Okay? <laughs> but if you've not done those things, stop feeling frustrated at the child that the child is stopping too much. Meanwhile, you are not the child is trying to let you know. Imagine a child that cannot tell you that person is paining me, is itching me, is is or is is heartbreaking. Think about these babies. Think about them sometimes. She can't your baby cannot say, Mommy is itching me, mommy is tight, mommy is paining me, mommy is hot. They can't say it. So they're there crying and you're like, What is wrong with this child? Meanwhile, they're not doing what they, what needs to be done. So me enter my children, my children start crying. I've, even till now I still do it. That's <laughs> that's the funny part. Even till now. Once I hear somebody doing yeah, 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 unnecessarily, I'll shout, Has she eaten? Has she slept? You know, I always ask, has she eaten? Has she slept? I mean for all my kids, even the seven-year-old that is Cora. 
have they eaten have they slept if they have eaten and they have slept and then they are still cranky they will now understand that okay this one is now beyond my control but if it's something that is, is within my control why can't i why can't i just you know do it and help the child anyway those are all the random questions that i got i think i think i still have one more yeah postpartum depression i still have one more video on that and yeah that video will be coming soon but i hope you guys enjoyed watching this one let me know in the comment section if you learned anything and i'll see you all in my next video bye guys